Because all I need is a three for that large straight. Hey there, just playing a little Yahtzee. Shoot. One more try. Ah. Well, I guess I'll take it in chant. Oh, where I use that? Well, it's zero for the Yahtzee then. You know, I like playing Yahtzee, but uh, there's all this math you gotta worry about. And, and I wish there was some kind of a story, uh, a bit more strategy. You know, I wish there was something that would combine all of this. And you know, someone else had that idea. Uh, Tom Lehman created a game called Umkrona and Klagen, and I'm gonna talk about it this week in Board Games with Scott. there. Welcome to Board Games with Scott. This is a weekly video show where I take a board game each week and spend some time explaining it, lightly review it, with the goal of helping you decide if it's a game you might want to purchase. This week I'm going to be looking at a German game, Um Klona and Kragen. Uh, this game came out in February of 2006 and is a game that's similar to Yahtzee, but it's got a bit of a story, a bit more strategy, and you don't have to bother adding up these rows and rows of numbers. Um, it's a game for two to five players, although with fewer players the game moves much more quickly. Uh, there's really not anything to help with downtime when it's not your turn. And so uh, it takes about 45 minutes with all five players, but much less time with fewer players. Um, it takes the basic concepts of Yahtzee that you're trying to roll, a uh, set of dice, and get things like a pair or, or three of a kind or a full house or a straight. Uh, but does it in a different fashion and with a, a scoring mechanism that uses a set of cards rather than using uh, rather than using score pads. And so what you're going to be doing is as you roll better hands, you're going to achieve these different cards and you get to keep them. Now the story of what's going on is you're trying to impress nobles. Uh, you, you start your, your way out with the jester and work your way up to the king and the queen. And uh, you're trying to roll the dice to impress them, getting better hands and getting more abilities, the ability to, to roll better. And uh, by the end of the game, you'll be rolling a whole handful of dice. You're going to start out with just a few dice. Uh, these cards give you different abilities that let you roll more dice and let you change the dice and do things like that. And the goal of the game is to be the person who rolls the most dice of the same rank on the last turn of the game. Now the last turn of the game is going to be triggered when someone manages to roll seven of a kind. Seven dice with the same number. That triggers the last turn of the game. That person impresses the king and the queen. And that person's going to get to go last in the final round of the game. Then everyone's going to get one chance to do the best they can. And the winner is the person who does the best on that last round of play. And so that's the, that's the game. So rather than adding up scores, it's who ends up working their way up the levels of difficulty of uh, rolling these different hands. But what it really comes down to is how well you can do in that last round of play. So with that, let's open up this little box and see what comes inside. Well, the main components you get are 12 dice. These are nice heavy-duty dice. Uh, they're red marbled dice. They look very nice. They roll nice. You might want to get a dice tray for this game because you're going to be dealing with these dice a lot. You get some handy-dandy reference cards, which if you happen to speak German, they're very lovely. If you don't, they're very useless. But uh, John Melby on BoardGameGeek.com has created some English translation sheets, which work well in helping uh, those of us who aren't so strong on German to play the game. You get a rule book, again in German, and again, John Melby has provided a translation for the rules on BoardGameGeek. Uh, you get a little marker to indicate who is the first player, and this is actually important because the role of first player in this game uh, shifts in a different way than what you may be used to. And then you get the major game, the heart, which are these, these cards. Uh, each of these cards has, a, has a, a nice illustration. These are really uh, lovely cards. A nice illustration on the top. On the bottom are some symbols to indicate to you what you have to do and earn the card and then what that benefit that card gets you. Uh, these cards, I'm, I, I am impressed with Amigo. You did a great job on these cards. They're tossed around and dealt with quite a bit, so they made them very heavy duty, heavy cardboard. Um, these cards are going to last uh, and be good for uh, all of the tossing around and turning and flipping that you do with them. So very, very happy with these cards. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all you need to. That's all you need to have to play the game. So why don't we talk a little bit more about how the mechanics work? When you start the game, this is the setup that you have. And what you have here are all the different roles, the different uh, people that you can impress by rolling the dice well. Uh, you're going to start here at the bottom and you're going to work your way up. Although you're free to jump and grab any role that you qualify for, 
um, at any point in the game. But in general, you're going to start down here at the bottom. And uh, as you get more and more dice and more and more abilities, you're going to work your way up until up here at the top, you get to the king and the queen. Now, the number of cards of each type are limited, and it's based upon the number of players. So with more players, there'll be more cards of each type, but there's never going to be enough cards for everyone to get a roll. With one exception of the starting roll down here with this jester, and uh, the jester is actually the only double-sided card as there's a roll on the other side. Um, you can have as many of these as you want, but of all of these guys, you can only have one of any specific card. So what's going to happen in the game is different players are going to end up building up different strategies based upon the roles that they pick. Or they may be forced to go down different paths based upon what other people take and there's no more of that choice. The way the game works is on your turn you're going to start with three dice. You're going to roll your three dice and of those three dice you must fix one die and say alright that die is going to remain a two. And then you can re-roll the other two. And then of those two, you must fix one, and then you can reroll what's left, and then you're done. So you always must fix one die. You may fix more than one die. You must fix at least one, and then you can continue. So the number of rolls you have, uh, the maximum will be the number of dice that you have. You're going to start with three, but there are cards you'll get very quickly that will give you more dice in your dice pool. Uh, so that's the way your turn goes. You roll all your dice. You must fix at least one. You may fix more, and then you reroll some as many as you'd like, uh, fixing at least one, and you keep re-rolling until they're all fixed, and then you look and see, well, what do you qualify for? Now, every one of these cards down here on this corner, on the bottom corner, is going to tell you what you have to have to qualify. Now, the jester down here, it's kind of the booby prize. Um, it's got, it says zero plus, which means if you roll a total of zero or more on your dice, you get the card. Congratulations! Uh, so this card is basically the, well, sorry, you didn't roll anything else. Here, you can have a jester. On the other side of the jester is a charlatan card, and it also has a zero plus ability, but also the symbol of the jester, meaning once you've gotten the jester card, if you roll that zero plus again, i.e. you don't get anything else, you can choose to flip it over and get its ability. And then the next time you do badly, you can take another jester card and so on. But this, it's a nice feature in that you never feel you're going away empty-handed. You're always going to get something out of it. Uh, but most likely you're going to get one of these other rolls. Now, this is basically a race game. It's a race to see who can roll the seven of a kind first. And that's your goal. So whenever you pick, you're always going to want to think, how does it get, get me closer to rolling more dice of the same kind? Now, the cards up here on one, for example, have a one on the back, which just helps you sort them out into their stacks. Uh, they have different uh, requirements. Like this one, this guy, for example, requires 15 or more. Now, so you can get 15 or more on three dice. It's not that difficult to do. And once you do, you're going to get this card. This person has the symbol of a pair, two, two of the same, and you can take that card. Uh, this woman has the symbol of all odd dice. Now, this is a case with this one and this one, which is all even dice, where more dice is actually more difficult. So with these folks, you may want to grab them early on because as you get more and more dice in your pool, it's going to be harder to roll all odds or all, or, or all evens. This person is three of a kind. So those are the basic for the ones you can grab first. And you can grab any of these if you qualify for them. Like this person is 20 plus. Well, you're not going to roll 20 plus on three dice. You're going to have to have more than three dice to make that happen. Four of a kind, uh, two pair. So for all of these, you're going to need more than three dice. This is a full house, five of a kind, a straight, with 1 through 5 or 2 through 6, 30 plus. And then this next level, you unlock with 6 of a kind, 3 pair, a straight 1 through 6, or 2 3 of a kinds. And then the king, you unlock with the uh, 7 of a kind. So again, that's your goal. Now, the abilities that you get are going to get uh, more and more powerful as well. At the beginning, the jester, for example, his ability is you get to re-roll one die for free. So that's out of your normal sequence. So at some point, if you have the Jester ability, you can say, well, I'm going to tap the Jester card, use the Jester card, and then reroll one die. And that doesn't count against your freezing or anything like that. And by the way, once you've frozen a dice in your rolling sequence, you can no longer uh, change that die. So once you deter decide to freeze it, you can't unfreeze it. It's stuck frozen. The, so that's the Jester, which is on this side. The Charlatan on this side allows you to get one extra die. So you lose the ability for that reroll, but you get one extra die from the beginning, which is a better ability anyway. Now, moving up to this row, the sort of abilities you get is this one is you tap it to add an extra die, and that die starts out on the number one. 
So you can use that strategically. You can determine you know, when to use it. You can see if you're rolling lots of ones and you can tap it and bring in that guy. Um, but if you're rolling lots of evens and you're going for this all evens, you may not want to. You may not, may not want that one at all. So part of it is the strategy of determining when to use it. Remember, you're going to start with three. If you have that charlatan, then you're going to start with four because it gives you one. And then at some point, you can tap that guy and bring in a fifth die. But it starts at one, but you can re-roll it. It's, just becomes, it's in your active pool at a one. You can re-roll it. So there's actually one of these cards for every one of those numbers. There's adding a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. So if you had all six of those, then you get to add six extra dice to your pool when you tap the cards, and they're going to come in at the numbers specified. So if you happen to get all six, then you could tap all six, bring in one through six, stop, and take the guy that requires the big straight, the one through six. That's one way to do it. Um, so that's one, of the, that's one of the abilities. Many of the cards just add more dice to your pool. Uh, there's some, some other cards that add one or two dice to your pool, but the numbers are not specified. So your pool can grow fairly large. Other things let you fiddle with the dice. And you end up uh, having to balance between fiddling with the dice and adding more dice to your pool. Uh, this one, which is a fairly basic card, lets you add one, two, or three to a die. Uh, this person lets you take numbers away from one die and add them to another die. And there's several other those that, rank, that change the ranks around as well. Uh, the alchemist, for example, which can be very powerful, lets you remove as many pips as you want from one die and add them to two other dice. And that can, you can really use that to be tricky because your goal, remember, is to make a bunch of dice at the same rank. So uh, if you roll like a five and two twos, you can take two off the five, reducing it to a three, and add those two pips to the two twos, picking them both up to a three, giving you now three threes. So that's sort of the trickiness you're going to get into. Uh, other dice, this one lets you add one to as many dice as you'd like. This is another one that lets you add two to as many dice as you'd like. Another character is the Handler, and the Handler gives you one free re-roll of all your active dice. So one time, you don't have to fix any dice, you can tap that and re-roll all your active dice. Uh, this fellow, the Astronomer, uh, lets you change one of your active dice to match something that's in your fixed pool. And this fellow lets you change one of your active dice to any number you want. Those are both very useful abilities. The, so that's actually, that's a pretty much a, a, a what the abilities are out, out there on the board. And then up here, the king and the queen. Uh, the queen gives you the ability to bring in an extra die and set it on any number you want. That's going to be really helpful in the final round. Remember, the goal of the final round is to roll the highest set of dice that you can. The other ability that the king gives you is the ability to go last in that final round, and that's fairly important. Uh, you also get to break ties, because if you're going last, you can see what your goal is. Um, the other trick on the final round is you're also trying to get, if there's two people that both roll, say, eight of the same number, the person who rolls the highest ranked wins. So eight sixes are going to be eight fives. So the, the other advantage of going last in that final round is you can see what you have to beat. It gives you a much better idea of, of your goal. You get to break ties and you get the ability of adding that one extra die of any rank you'd like to your set. Since I've talked a little bit about turn order, I do want to discuss how that works in the game. Now, the game comes with this little guy, which lets you indicate who is the start player of the round. The way it works is, let's say there's four people, you put it in front of someone, that person goes, everyone around the table goes in clockwise order, and then this moves one space counterclockwise. So if you're the last person in the round, you will be the first person in the round next time. So essentially, you get two turns in a row if you're last. And so then that's how this continues. So this thing moves counterclockwise, giving the last player in each round a second turn, uh, which is a very nice ability. That's a, it's, it's cleverly designed uh, to, keep, uh, to, keep you from feel like, to keep you from feeling like you know, you're, if you're last, then it's going to be forever before you're able to get anything good. Here, you can go last in the round, but then go first in the next round. Let's see, what else? Um, I think that's really about it. So on your turn, you roll your dice, and you tap your cards to use your abilities, and your goal is to get as many as you can of the same number. Um, let's take a quick look, actually, at how a, a turn, a fairly complex turn, could come into play. All right, let's have a sample round, and we'll see how well I can do. Let's say these are the characters that I've gotten so far. I've got these two characters, which are going to let me add some dice. These will let me introduce a two and a three in my active dice pool. The philosopher will let me subtract one and add it to another. The Hofdom will let me add one to as many dice as I'd like. 
The astronomer lets me change one of my dice to make it equal to my fixed dice. The handler lets me have one free reroll of all my active dice. And the Zalber lets me switch one dice to any number I'd like. So we're going to start with three because that's your basic amount. Everyone, oh, you start the turn with three. And we're going to tap the charlatan and the felled hair, which is going to add another three to my pool. So let's, let's, let's me start with six. So let's roll and see how this goes. All right, so I'm looking at this. I'm saying, all right, let's say my goal is to get as many of the same number as I would like. So one thing I might do here is I might say, well, all right, I've got a pair of fives. That's pretty interesting. And um, I could tap this philosopher, which lets me subtract one from this to get it down to a five. And then I have to add it to something else. So I'll add it to this one, which gets that up to a five. So that's the philosopher. So now I've got four fives. Now, at this point, I want to bring in my other dice. So I'll go ahead and tap these two to bring them in at a two and a three. They're not particularly interesting to me what rank they come in on, because again, I'm shooting for fives here. So there's my three and my two. Now I can re I have to fix some dice. I'm going to fix those four dice, and I can re-roll these four. So these cards are used, and so now I'll just look at my active cards and see what I have left to do. Again, I'm trying to get all fives. All right, that's not a very good roll. Um, I could choose to fix something if I want. I don't like this roll at all, so I'm going to go ahead and use the handler at this point, which lets me re-roll all the active dice in my pool. All right, so that's a little better. That gets me another five, which I like. I can tap the Hof Dom to take as many dice to it. I can add one to as many dice as I'd like. I'll add one to that to get that to a five. And now I have the Zalberer, which lets me set a die at any number I'd like. I'll use that to set that to a five. And the Astronomer, which lets me change a die to any number that's already fixed. Well, I will use that and fix that to a five. So that is how I just managed to get eight fives using those characters. Uh, and this is how the game works. So it's all about being tricky, using your abilities at the right moment, and attempting to get as many dice showing the same number as you can. Well, that's Unkrona and Kragen. Uh, it's a nice game. I do enjoy this game. Uh, I have always enjoyed Yahtzee, and I think that would be a good indicator if you would like this game. If you do like Yahtzee, uh, you'll like this game because it's like Yahtzee, but it's got special abilities. It's got a bit of strategy. Uh, it's got much more feeling of you're competing directly against each other because you're all going towards that same goal. And there are limited numbers of roles, and so you're fighting over those roles as well. And part of your strategy is figuring out, well, I've got multiple choices. I'll take the one that's got one remaining, or I'll take the one I think is more powerful. Uh, so you build up this, this body of special abilities. It can get fairly complex, and so I don't know that it'd be a good game for people that like the simplicity of Yahtzee. Uh, because as the game gets toward the end, you're going to have six or seven different roles in front of you. And the, the game at that point is really all about being very clever and using your different roles at the right time during your turn in order to come up with the best uh, set of dice. So if you find a lot of the strategy games that I've talked about to be too complex and frustrating, then you probably don't want to get into this game. It can get difficult when you're managing all those roles. If you like strategy games but you don't like Yahtzee, I'd also say to avoid this game because at its heart, that's what it is. You're rolling dice, re-rolling dice to try and get a better set of dice. That's what's going on in the basic mechanics. So you should be able to tell from that whether it's a game you'd like to purchase. And that's my goal here at Board Games with Scott. So with that, I'll thank you for coming. And if you want to see more of these shows, you want to get the audio version of these shows or find out where to buy these games, head over to BoardGamesWithScott.com. If you want to chat about this game or download some of the player aids that will help you play this game uh, in a different language, then go to BoardGameGeek.com. They've got some great uh, items there. With that, I will thank you very much for coming, and I will see you on a future episode of Board Games with Scott. Bye-bye. So this card, I can tap it to take a pip from one die and add it to another die. So if I want to do that, I could make both of these a two. So I'll be adding one to the one to make it a two, and I'll be taking one away from the three to make it a two. Huh? Wait a minute. There's no two on this die. That actually happened during play. This is a die that I got with the game. It has two threes, and it has two fives. A one and a six. It has no four and no two. And if you look, I guess what happened is there was a misstamp 
Um, if that, that middle one was not there on either one of those, that'd be a normal two and that'd be a normal four. Uh, but as it is, I have a very bizarre little die here. So anyway, watch your dice. That's the warning.